Fellow auto detailers, welcome to the show that features interviews with today's most successful auto detailers. This is the Auto Detailing Podcast. Here's your host, Jimbo Balaam. Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome to this episode of the Auto Detailing Podcast. I'm obviously Jimbo, your host, and this episode is brought to you by autofiber.com, autofiber.ca, and autofiber.com.au, and you want to check out the Tal of the Month Club, Tal of the Month Club at autofiber.com. You, of course, can use code Jimbo, and you will get your discount, autofiber.com, autofiber.ca, autofiber.com.au. Check it out. All right, what's up, everyone? Welcome to episode 386 of the Auto Detailing Podcast. I'm Jimbo, your host, and today we have Philip Miranda. You may know him from the Miranda Detailing YouTube channel. And Philip, welcome to the Auto Detailing Podcast. Thank you, Jimbo. Super excited to be here. Glad to have you here. Have you done a podcast yet, or is this one of your first podcasts? No, this is a first for me. Awesome. Love hearing that. Love hearing that. So, Philip, you've got a thriving YouTube channel going, you've got a thriving detailing business, but I'm sure it wasn't always like that. So, take us back to the beginning. Why detailing? How detailing? How'd you get started? Why'd you get started? Kind of all that fun stuff. Yeah, sounds good. So, uh, basically, 10 years ago is when we started. Actually, our work anniversary is going to be this coming October. It's going to be 10 years. Awesome. And uh, we moved down from... Yeah, we, we moved down from northern New York and Vermont area. So we're okay. we're like north northeasterners. And um basically up there I was doing a, a bunch of different jobs. I wasn't even into detailing related stuff at all. I was doing house painting, I was doing all sorts of odd jobs. The economy up there was was pretty rough. It's it's gotten worse actually. Um, you know, just for young people trying to find work up there, it's it's really difficult. Um, so the last, I would say two years before we moved down here, it was, uh, 2007, 2008, I was, uh, getting into bumper painting at, mm. uh, dealerships and, uh, actually a friend of my wife's, uh, they had a, a really awesome business. It was very unique. I had never heard of it before, but it had been around for years. Uh, where basically he has a, a trailer and they would go to different dealerships and they would repair and paint bumpers on the spot at mm. dealerships. Mm. And uh, so I jumped on board with them and, and they trained me and I learned how to do that. I did about two years of that and I loved it. I thought it was such a cool concept. Um, I learned a lot about, you know, repairing um, minor body work, mostly with plastic, not so much with metal body work, but with plastic bumpers learning how to repair them, uh, then learning the paint systems, um, working with a couple of different types of PPG paint systems, um, you know, base coat, the clear coat, learning how to prime, learning how to finish it, learning how to wet sand a little bit, and, you know, so that you can make the bumper look like it was factory fresh again. And, and right. Used, so. And, and so basically you're, you're dealing with the trade-ins, right? So the trade-ins will exactly. that are in pretty much every single car – has all four corners scraped up, right? All four corners of the bumper. Exactly. So so you're in charge yep. of making that look pretty so that uh, they can resell the car. Exactly, yeah. Gotcha. And, and okay. it, was a, it was a really cool job. I, I love doing it because I love the fact that it was mobile. Um, I love the fact that, you know, working on cars was fun. Working with the paint systems, learning how to clear coat. I really enjoyed that. I think it was really cool. So, um I was doing, I was basically employed by, by her friends uh, doing that. And I'm like, I, w- I want to do this on my own. I'd love to do this. So my wife and I were trying to figure out how we could do that, you know, make, make a business like that. Um, but of course we couldn't do it in the same area. We were like, we got to move. We got to go somewhere right. else. We can do it. Maybe have a longer work season because the winters up there were brutal. And I would work through the winter and painting cars outdoors in the winter was insane i was gonna say it sounds like I, horrendous yeah i had to do some crazy potentially dangerous stuff with you know those propane powered salamanders and tents and <laughs> potentially pretty, illegal pretty like yeah <laughs> it's illegal and explosive you know you're working with a trailer with tons of chemicals and right stuff, and then, you, then i have this propane burner and then i'm looking back on it I'm like wow i'm surprised i didn't catch that thing on fire and blow it up but yeah 
<laughs> so in retrospect, you know, that probably wasn't the best idea. But, you know, you got to do what you got to do. We hustled. 100%. Um, yeah, yeah. So we decided we, we wanted to move further south, uh, warmer climate on the coast. We love going to the beach. So we kind of picked a happy medium. Like, okay, Carolinas or Virginia. Ended up, we, we moved to here to Virginia. We, we met up with some friends down here. And, uh, yeah, it was it was basically September of 2009 when we moved. Wow. And in October, I was I wanted to start this bumper painting business, but after doing a lot of research, I'm like, man, the startup cost was insane. It would have been like 20 grand or more mm. to buy everything and start it up. And I'm like, I'm like 30 grand in debt. I, I can't do that. <laughs> right. And, and so, did, were you moving, like, did your wife have, have a job that you were moving to? Or were you also moving to this new place with no job either? Yeah, no job Got it. at all. We were working together. Like, gotcha. She she was doing like um, she was painting. Like her her, her dad was the one who had the painting business, so I okay. went along with it. But it it slowly died out, unfortunately, due to the economy. And uh, so we're like, okay, well, what do we do? So that was our our plan was let's let's get this bumper painting business. Of gotcha. Course, the, the startup cost for that was too much. So right. Uh, along all my research, you know, looking at different chemicals and looking at different things for trailers and and painting and you know mobile car work, I stumbled across detailing, and I'm like, what's what detailing? And the more research I did, I, I think that one of the first sites I looked on was like Detail King. Mm-hmm. Um, there was another one I forget. Oh, Chemical Guys, Chemical Guys site. Yep. Yeah. And I was looking at the trailers and the equipment. And I'm like, what is this? This looks awesome. And the more I looked into it and priced stuff out, I'm like, this is a more viable option. Um, so that's what we did. We just did the ton of research. And I'm like, okay, I, I know I need either a van or a trailer. I need a pressure washer. I need a tank. I need a generator. I need a vacuum. I need equipment, chemicals. I looked into chemicals. So, yeah, October of 2009, we like – Wrapped together all this stuff, yeah. bought it like a uh, an old Astro van and like not even the commercial Astro van. It was like the right the regular like the family one, one. I, <laughs> like the family one. Took all the stuff out of it, rigged up the system in it, which at the time was was pretty good, and uh, and just went from there. I mean, we started dirt cheap, begging people to wash their cars, like mm. charging twenty five bucks to wash and fully vacuum. Mm-hmm. And we would we would spend like an hour on it, and we're like, "This is this is tough. This is killer." <laughs> and so we did that for like a year. Wow. And and you, was it literally as simple as that? Because I get the question, and I'm sure you see it too a lot in these Facebook groups. It's like, I don't have any work. How do I get more work? And so it's I always try to like focus in. If, if for some reason we've had I've had a few like three or four people from the Virginia Carolinas area on the show recently. And so, and a lot of them have started from scratch. Right. And so I always like to try to glean into that of like, was it literally as like as primitive as begging people to wash their car? Like, you know, because some people, and, and I'm not saying that in a demeaning way or anything like that, but cause people ask a lot, right? Like I have no clients and I literally say like, if you have no clients, what does it matter if you go do free work? right? Or cheap work, right? Yeah. Just to get your name yeah. out there. Oh, yeah, exactly. I was I was doing freebie add-on stuff. I was doing, you know, multiple car discounts just to to put it out there. And, and also to get the work experience, you know, because I was used to talking to people anyway. I was used to talking to dealerships and used car salesmen. I don't know if you deal with used car salesmen at all, but I not don't, to crash but all car salesmen. They do have a bad but, rap. But man, they... <laughs> Yeah, they, they do. And, and I've experienced it firsthand. Not all guys are like that. It's, it's a certain it's a certain breed of human <laughs> that, you know, <laughs> can just be ignorant or arrogant to just treat you like trash. And I've had a few of those. But, you know, for the most part, I had a lot of nice detail. I mean, um, dealership guys that, that were super appreciative. They, they liked the work. They treated me with respect. And, you know, but I've dealt with good ones. I've dealt with bad ones. So I, I have a lot of experience with talking and negotiating and talking with people. So I would, you know, I use that when talking to customers and, and uh, you know, reasoning with them and, and, 
and negotiating things with them and telling them what we do, you know, how to upsell and, and how to talk and, and sell yourself basically. Uh, not sell yourself cheap, but, you know, to start, you got to do something. You got to put something right. out there and you got to hustle. And uh, did you start bit. with so, mainly uh, dealers with your detailing business too, because that's what you're familiar with or who did, or did you start with predominantly uh, retail work? Yeah, I started predominantly with retail. I, mm. Because of the difficulty I had with some of the dealerships, I'm like, no, no, no. I want to stay away from dealer work right now. Gotcha. If I need to, I'll I'll go to it. But I wanted to go to like just private, you know, personal retail yep. jobs first. Okay. Um, and and that did work. I you know here in Richmond, it was a nice it's a nice area when it comes to like business parks and stuff like that, where you can drive in and go into different offices and basically just yep. ask like, hey. I'm washing cars today, 25 bucks a pop, anyone mm-hmm. want? And that's basically what we did. And and for a year, we had like a route, you know, like every day we would go and hit up these places. And and some of them would, you know, want a full detail. Some of them would want just cheap stuff. So that's basically how we how we started doing it. Mm. Um, but the real, the real switch up came when it was about a year into it and and we we're almost at the point of giving up because it was really, really difficult and we weren't making a lot of money. Mm-hmm. And I wasn't putting a lot of money into advertising anyway, just because I was on a budget. So along the way came Groupon. So Groupon was just starting up at yep. that point, like 2010 ish. Yeah. And they just hit Richmond's. And, you know, Groupon, when they first started, it was a hit. It, it was great. It worked out good because it was huge. Yeah. They weren't inundated. Exactly. They weren't like infiltrated with all these different companies. They focused on one company a day. It was all you, all one day. Mm. And uh, I remember just on the computer, just, you know, researching ideas of like advertising. And, and I stumbled across Groupon and like, yeah, let me just put my name in there. And I filled in a little form and sent it in. And then they called me. And uh, they told me how it all worked. And I'm like, hey, I got nothing to lose. Let's go for it. Right. So, um, yeah, I, I got to say that Groupon years ago, back in 2010, mm-hmm. actually put us on the map. They And what was your offer with Groupon back going. then? Wow, that's insane. It was 100 bucks. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it was $100, one of our $100 details, priced at 50, 50 bucks. Right. And it was basically, you know, wash, complete wash, spray wax, full interior vacuum, wipe down. Got it. Tires, wheels, you know, nothing like, nothing extravagant at all. Right. Um, but yeah, so it was priced at 50 bucks and then, you know, you get, you get half of that. So right. you're making 25%, you're making 25 bucks or less. Mm-hmm. Um, but then they pay you in like three installments. So you get money up front pretty quickly. Mm. And I had my website. That was one thing I knew I needed to get set right away is, is a proper website with info, prices, packages. And once I had that set, I went on with Groupon. And I remember the first day that, that the deal hit, um, I didn't have any work that day. So I'm just like, hey, let's just watch and see what happens. I'm keeping track on it. Right. And I'm seeing all the numbers, you know, people buying it, buying it, buying it. I'm doing the math in my head. I'm like, whoa. Like at the end of the day, <laughs> it, it added up to about $3,000. Whoa, the first day. The first day, and they and they wow. paid me in installments, you know, like a month apart, you know, mm-hmm. one month apart. So, like right off the bat, they paid me a grand, and I'm like, okay, you're like, this is gonna that, work. That, that that's something. Um, but the other challenge was I would never had to schedule details this many before, so I'm getting so, calls, right? And calls the whole day. I was on the phone, back to back to back to back to back, and. You know, I learned very quickly how to schedule things properly, how to time things properly, like how to figure out since I'm mobile, which person I start with first. So I'm not going back and forth and wasting time and gas. So the first couple of months, it was like chaotic. I was all over the place trying to like fill in all these people. I was doing like five of those a day, which was killing me. Right. But it also taught us. Sorry, I was just going to say, did you have any issues with people thinking that they were going to maybe be getting like a full shampoo instead of just a full vacuum? Or did that, was that something that you would go over like before you started detailing the car? Did you run into any issues with that? 
Uh, very few. Very few. People okay. were pretty good Got about it. reading the stuff. Okay. And, and when they call, they would ask me questions, and I would explain gotcha. them. Um, yeah, a few people were like, it's not a full detail, and, <laughs> you know, give you a hard time. But right. For okay. the most part, I, we, we had a good experience with it. Hmm. Um, but, you know, we, we learned some things along the way, like what to put in the the group on, like, um, text, you know, like mm-hmm. what maybe a travel charge or an extra charge for dog care or something like that. We we learned that along the way. We did, we did it three times, and by the third time, that's when it started to be kind of um, – infiltrated with other detailers and all this other stuff and how many and then we're like by that time we didn't need it r- right right and how many how many did you sell in total do you remember oh man i think it was like 400 wow wow 400 customers it was a huge number and i felt like i was happy but then i felt like anxiety i'm like whoa right how am i gonna how am i gonna fulfill all of those but they did all the math and they're like 25 or more percent are not going to redeem it and you'll never hear from them. Oh. And consistently that's about how much it was by the end of it all. Like they didn't, they never even called. They never redeemed. It's like they bought it and forgot it. Oh, wow. 25% which, which too. That's yeah. That's a big number. Yeah. It's a hundred people. It like I was, <laughs> yeah, I, I was, I was kind of shocked at that, but, um, but then later on Groupon was like, well, you don't lose it completely. If the customer calls later on, like someone call a year later and they're like, Hey, I got this group on. Oh, and I'm no. like, well, you can use the cash value of it. Gotcha. You know, like if it's 50 bucks, you use that towards another detail and then people were okay with that. So, um, and did you, um, this is so interesting. I don't think I've ever had someone on the podcast that had like a successful group on and kind of used it. I think it's a great idea because you went from like hardly any clients, right. To 400 customers yeah. right, or potential exactly. customers. Right. So, do you still like did you were you able to keep a lot of those customers on as either reoccurring clients or did they keep coming back were they willing to spend more money with you than just if it wasn't um like a deal yeah yeah um off the top of my head i'm thinking maybe about mm, 10 to 15 percent maybe more of okay. those customers wow from the very first one we still I think if we still have one or two today, and I think we do. Wow. That are that are regular maintenance, like they, wow. they would buy a new car. And, yeah. And we do like a full detail for them, and then every other month or, or quarterly we do sure. a maintenance detail. So yeah, we, wow. we actually have customers from the very first one that we did ten years ago. That's incredible. Which yeah, so I mean, it's kind of an interesting success story because if you try to do that now, it it wouldn't work. Hmm. it's it's changed so much because it's too saturated with detailers yep too saturated yep gotcha yep i mean not to say that it wouldn't work at all you 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 definitely still get business from it um but you'd have to control it i've I've helped a couple of other detailers that wanted to do group on too and i told them you know give them some tips on how to control how many you do because you don't have to sell that many you can cap it Mm. at a smaller amount and and i did that later on i cap it at only like a few hundred like maybe 200 at the most right that way it's not too much and that way it's easier to handle um and you know you can customize a lot of different things around that and i, and I told them too this is another big thing when it comes to our website i never paid any advertising for our website but from the beginning when groupon uh runs your deal I got thousands of hits on the website. It just oh. it just grew in so much traffic that I realized that was the key to boosting your website and, and like your organic, you know, searching <laughs> online. Right. I, I kept watching my website grow at like from the fifth page. Hmm. And like every week or so I check and check and I'm like, it's getting up, it's getting up to now we're on the first page. And we organically just come up in searches. And it's because of the thousands of hits that we got from running multiple groups oh. and having, having the web presence. So technically, if you are going to do any type of advertising, I see the benefit now of actually paying someone money to optimize your website so that you get thousands of hits. 
of relevant people like right. wanting details and are interested in details in your mm-hmm. business because that's what did it. Now our like people just say, Hey, I typed in detailing and I just found you guys on web on Google. And I'm like, you know, where exactly did you see the page? Like where what I'll, <laughs> right. I'll be specific. And I'm like, okay, cool. That's and I never paid for any advertising other than what you give Groupon because you give Groupon fifty percent right, you know, off the top, but it's not out of pocket, which is Right, right. That's what I tell people too sometimes about Google AdWords is like, you know, yeah, you're paying to advertise, but in the same sense, it's like you're you're paying to uh for your page to be at the top, but what that does is the same thing like Groupon did for your website. It just makes it uh makes more people go there, right? And then yeah. the more people that go there, the more organic reach you're getting, and then the more organic reach you're getting, the less you're going to have to actually run ads for in the future you know bingo and you exactly. you probably ended up getting people that didn't buy the group on that still became customers then too huh oh yeah oh yeah all the time so i get calls where they're like they realize they're like you know what? i'm not gonna buy the group on i'll buy it from you and you'll get the full cash and right like, yeah cool yep. I, don't, I don't mind i mean there's there's nothing really against that if someone wants to pay you money to detail their car whether they saw an ad or not I'm not going to say like no. Buy it from Groupon specifically. Right. I'll I'll take it without worrying about the, yeah. the fee or the anything. Fee. So, yeah, <laughs> that's amazing. Yeah, so, so a lot of people do that. So then from there, and how long did those three, uh, those those three uh, ad, I don't want to say ads, but those three Groupons, how long did those run? Um, I think they would run. Oh man. Well, the first one ran for only that one day, and then the other two, because they started to grow, would run for like a few days, like three days, or until it got up to like a certain number, like the cap mm. that they wanted. Um, yeah, and so it would run the, the 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 past two ones would run for like a couple of days. Got it. Um, and then you know you're you're fulfilling customers for like six months to a year. Gotcha. So the first couple of months you're like inundated with calls. Then there's like a a lag in the middle couple of months and then towards the end of the ex like almost when the uh coupon is going to expire that's when you get like a ton more people um so that mm. their their statistics were right they told me that that would happen and they were they're right on like with with those numbers so did you and and what did that look like since you got paid in installments did you kind of just budget that through uh, or like did you try to fit regular clients into the groupon clients to kind of help with cash flow or what did that look like yeah so the first time was the learning process um because we we got the check right away and we had to budget it because then we're like well, we're doing all these details. There's weeks of details. Right. We're not actually making the money right. per day. We're just running off of mm-hmm. that. So, yeah, we quickly had to learn, no, we need to fill in where we can. You know, maybe like do two Groupons in the morning or do two Groupons in the afternoon and leave an open slot for a full paying, you know, cash paying customer. Right, right. And, yeah, we just had to work that out. We, we eventually, I even came up, like I had to, go on like my word document and make a schedule for each week. Like this is how many details I can fit a day and I'll schedule them accordingly, but I'll leave open slots on purpose mm. in case I get any other customers. And if I didn't, then I'd call group, you know, other group on customers and fill them that day. Got it. But yeah, we quickly learned, you know, to, to do that. And, and eventually when we phased out all of the group ones, like when they were all done, all redeemed, all done, um, it was amazing that we just kept getting calls, just kept getting calls. And these were not Groupon customers. These were the customers that were coming from the organic search. And it was nice to actually see our schedule then fill up with mm. all full cash paying customers. Like all the Groupons phased out. How long did that take like, for oh, them great. to phase out? Um, at least a year after the last Groupon. Okay. Some of them hung on to about a year, and they're like, hey, I found this Groupon. And I'm like, that's a year old. <laughs> right. But I would redeem the cash value. And, mm. and eventually, yeah, eventually they all they all phased out. Hmm. So, um, yeah, it was, it was nice to actually start seeing the the, the benefits from that. We, we did see it about a year after that is when we just would get booked solidly with 
with cash customers. It's nice. Wow. So catch us up to speed to, well, let's, let's kind of work through it, I guess. So then you finally, that kind of explodes your detailing business, right? Or kind of, kind of locks you into the Richmond area at least, right? And, And establishes you as the detailer in that area. So is that how it went then it it boosted your your online ranking and your seo and it kind of just started flowing like that yeah yeah it, it, that's basically what it is nice. like, i didn't do any any more advertising i did nothing i just let it ride from that because we were actually so busy i was getting mm. booked up like two to three sometimes even four weeks out wow. and I, and then, and we had people literally tell us i'll wait for you Wow. And that felt really good. I'm like, heck wow, yeah, that's, that's really good. Like it made us feel really good. You know, like we have yep. a good reputation, mm-hmm. tons of different referrals, mm-hmm. good repeat business. Um, so to this day, you know, I, I don't do any other advertising. I get calls all the time and they're like, don't you want more business? And I'm like, I'd be giving it away. So I'd be paying right. to give my competition or to give other people right. <laughs> you know, work. So yeah, I don't even do it anymore. Right. So what is, what is Miranda detailing look like now? And then tell us about kind of the YouTube channel, why you started that and, and all that good stuff. Yeah. So, um, so now, you know, with, with our business, it's, it's still going, we took a little hit this winter. I don't know if it was uh, the economy or what was going on, but this winter was pretty hard on us. Um, but now into summer again, and we're booked out like two weeks which is nice. Mm. So we're, we're still, we're still at the grind. We got to hustle a little bit now and then, Mm -hmm. but, uh, but that's the way it is. And, um, with the YouTube channel, I started that, I think, man, now it's been over a year. I got to look at when my first video was. Okay. Um, yeah. So when I first started that, I basically wanted to do a couple of videos just to document, um, what a full interior and exterior detail looks like, Mm. how we do it. And I'm in my mind, I'm like, oh, great. I'll just, you know, I'll send a customer this link so they can basically meet us before they meet us, see the work that we're doing from beginning, during, and end. And then hopefully that would, that would be like my advertising. So they would see it and be like, oh, well, that's what I want. I want my vehicle to look like that. I want to see them doing the work just like that. Mm. Um, so that's kind of how it started. And then it just kind of snowballed into all this other stuff. I got, I kind of got addicted to like videoing and editing and (laughs) seeing what else can I do. Right. So it just kept growing and growing and growing. (laughs) That's awesome. And has it, has it helped your detailing business? Like your original plan of having either being able to send a customer a video of like, this is what we do, or this is what you can expect. Has it actually uh, kind of aided in that helping with the SEO and all that? Yeah. It definitely did. I was very surprised. I actually had quite a few local customers here that said when they booked the appointment, they're like, I saw you on YouTube and, gotcha. and I want what you did to that vehicle. <laughs> I'm like, oh, that's awesome. Like, again, when I first heard that, it was like a couple of months ago, a customer said that. It's kind of weird, huh? customers, actually. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, oh, that's weird. And one of them was like, hey, I, I saw you on your video. Like, it is you. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> it's like I wait. Didn't, I didn't hire an actor. Right. It's like wait. You're the one that's going to be the detailer. You're going to be detailing it. Yeah. I thought it was just. I thought you just made videos all day. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. That's I why, wish. I'd love to do that. Right. That'd be fun. And that's why I tell people too. I think that's a great another great example. And I think this podcast has been uh, phenomenal for great practical examples of how to like build a legitimate business and get customers right. And and two two things that I think most detailers getting into it or, or struggling to get clients can do, you know, a group on, like you said, probably not the most ideal anymore, but still worth a try because it doesn't cost you any money. Right. right. And then, right. Exactly. and then putting out videos on the internet. Right. And it's like, yeah. man, it's, it's the, the best way to get free product. Right. If you could start yep. amassing a following, you get all these companies wanting to send you stuff. So you get free product. And but other than that, you could repurpose those videos and and really, you know, tag the videos properly with your local uh, your local area and community and really win the SEO game. I think it's a brilliant, brilliant strategy, you know. Yeah, it, it really is. It's 
I think it's definitely a game changer, and I hope it stays this way for a while um, because it, it's definitely upped our game. You know, I, I actually feel like I detail better because I'm like, oh, I want to get footage of me mm. detailing this. Mm-hmm. And it kind of forces me to actually be more detail oriented and to Interesting. these little areas. And yeah, so I think it's it's actually made me a little bit more detail oriented than than I think I already am. But there, you know, there's always areas that I I might just forget or miss. But if I put it on camera, I made sure to get it. Got it. So have, it's, it's a good learning process for me. Have you? ever considered or thought about starting to incorporate the bumper repainting into your detailing business? I thought about it because it, it can be really good money. Um, but then again, that I think about the, the paint system that I would, that I would have to get, I think is still around like 10 grand. Got it. The whole system. Okay. And more, like I think about it and like, Oh, I'd like to do it. But then I'm like, mm, I think I should just stick with, it would almost detailing. it would almost take you off course of what you're trying to do and it, what you're trying to build. I think I think it would, yeah, yeah. Gotcha. So even though it would be a good money maker, I think I'm gonna I'm really pushing towards more YouTube related stuff mm-hmm. and uh, more how tos on YouTube and and also you know I I do the new car preps and ceramic coatings and that's also where I want to sh- hopefully shift our business into. Yeah, let's um, let's talk about that. What do you see? That. What do you see for the future, or where? What are you? Where? I guess what are you mainly doing right now? I assume it's not the the route of office parks and office buildings anymore. Maybe it is. Maybe that's incorporated in your business too. But kind of where where's the business right now, and then where are you trying to where are you trying to move it to? Um, yeah, where are you trying to where are you trying to grow it to? I guess. Yeah. Yeah. So. I got to say, I think I'll always still be mobile. At least that'll always be a part of it. Sure. But I do have a garage here at my house that, that I just rent, so I don't own the place, but I, I rent it. And I'm fortunate enough to have a nice garage that I can do work and have customers come to me. And, and when we got this place about six years ago, I was super excited because I'm like, now I can, now I can offer ceramic coatings where I mm. wasn't able to before without a garage. So now that I've got a pretty good handle on, I mean, I've been doing the ceramic coatings and paint, you know, full paint corrections for about six years now. And, and I love that. I love being able to just take my time and mm-hmm. be in a controlled environment. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> I, I envy some of those guys that have those beautiful shops, you know, and, and I'm like, man, I want that. But I know it takes a little bit of capital and some time to, to get to that point. And, you know, my business is small. It's my wife and I. We, we keep it small on purpose because it's more manageable. But, you know, there's pros and cons to it. It's, it's, it's nice and manageable. But you also don't make as much money and you don't have the, um, you know, the pro of just having a nice big shop, which sure. then that comes with all the other expenses and everything else. So right. we're trying to, again, kind of grow that organically. We'd like to find maybe another house to rent. Or maybe potentially by next couple of years, that has a nice garage, bigger garage, and then I would hopefully try to advertise more of the um, new car preps, the paint corrections, the ceramic coatings, and and do more of those, and uh, still do some mobile jobs here and there. But I'd like to phase it into kind of shop work, but at my garage, not like a big gotcha detail shop itself. Yep. That would yep. be ideal. That would be like my ideal thing is to just have customers come to me at my own garage at my house mm. and I just enjoy it, take the time and film it and and, and detail their vehicle. Like that's <laughs> that would be so enjoyable to me. When I when I get days like that, I have a customer coming next week, it's a minivan that I'm gonna be polishing and coating a new car. And I'm gonna just enjoy that, you know, just take the whole mm-hmm. two days and just film it and enjoy doing it. That's it's very relaxing, it's very satisfying. Yep. And then hopefully to grow into that. Got it. And then YouTube is still a big part and a big strategy behind that as well. Growing that, growing your channel and, and doing that. Definitely. Definitely. The more I do that, um, I enjoy the engagement with, with guys on here. You know, some are experienced detailers that give me tips. Some are new guys that want tips. They, they want ideas and they're always reaching out to me and I, 
I like that. I, I really enjoy helping people in that, in that way. And there's stuff that I don't know. And, you know, I'm, I'm still learning stuff. And, uh, and I love bouncing ideas off of people and, and learning about new techniques, new products. And, and I, I think that's, this is a good avenue to, to do that. So I'm, I'm going to really focus on growing the channel. Um, we did partner up with uh, Chicago Auto Pros. Okay. Yeah. Um, yep. Jay, Jason from Chicago, and he's he's such a cool guy. He, uh, I can't remember if I think he actually contacted me. I can't remember how it started, but we were communicating, and and um, and basically he he wanted to have us on board as, I guess he kind of calls it like an ambassador program. Like I he sends me products to use, and uh, I'll do how to videos, not necessarily reviews, but okay how to's uh, simple stuff too like even for beginners like how to i got two videos that are going to be dropping soon either one next week and maybe the week after that how to use an all-purpose cleaner using the am details mm -hmm. yep. uh, apc which I'm, i loved their products and i finally mm -hmm. got my hands on them because chicago auto pros uh carries them right i've had and, alan on um, the show oh yeah yeah mm -hmm. he's such a cool guy he is he's funny um so yeah, I'm, I'm excited. I have like almost their whole line of stuff, and I'm just going to do videos on each of their things. Um, and there, you know, and then Jason will post it on his carguysupplies.com. Gotcha. Okay. And, nice. Uh, so it, it's a nice, it's a nice partnership that we're, Heck yeah. you know, kind of setting up, and and I'm hoping that that will, you know, kind of cross cross over for both of our channels and and both of our mm. you know, his store and, and my YouTube channel, and uh, yeah, hopefully hopefully gain some more experience and in, in customers and, and things like that from, from that crossover. Yeah. And the networking, I mean, I've said it before, I'll say it again. It's like the networking with other detailers in the industry is invaluable, right? It's so cool oh, when yeah. you can, you can hang out with like-minded people that are trying to do the same things that are doing the same things. Right. And, and kind of, make it happen with each other. I think that's such a cool, such a cool opportunity that guys are starting to take advantage of, but I think more, more guys should really look for that, that opportunity. So I think that's, that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, the, when I first started this too, um, like going back to where we go to office parks and, and like beg people to wash their mm -hmm. cars, if I saw another detailer there, I got super nervous and I actually felt like, I don't want to tread on their right, turf, it's like their turf, <laughs> right. you know, and I actually felt bad. I'd be like, Nope, I'm going to turn around. I'm going to go somewhere else because I didn't, I, mm. I do feel that sense of like respect for other detailers. Like I'm not going to go mess with their territory, mm -hmm. mess with their thing that they got going. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I, I learned later on, I actually learned. Yeah. Much later on after that, I didn't mind that as much. In fact, I would actually go up to them and like introduce myself, talk to them, Right. And network with them and, and partner up with them because I, I realized that, I mean, there's not really competition, quote, <laughs> with, with detailers. Yeah, and I don't not, feel that way. Because I don't either. Yeah. There, there's so many cars. I mean, there's literally millions of cars out there. I'm, I'm not going to compete. There, there's no competition. <laughs> right. I mean, there, there literally right. is. There's so much work out there. There's enough for everybody. I agree. And it's. And it's constant work. It's not like you detail a car and it's good. It's going to come back to you. 100%. And you detail it again. <laughs> so it is, you know, it's, it's going to come back. So, yeah, I, I learned right away that, like, partner up with detailers. Meet them. Greet them. If they're jerks, don't do anything with them. Right. If they're cool guys, network with them. That's totally. My, that's my take on it. 100%. 100%. Yeah. Philip, this has been awesome. I feel like there's going to be a ton of people out there that uh, want to pick your brain even more or want to follow along your journey and kind of watch you grow and expand and kind of model their business off uh, model their business off yours and what you've been doing. So what's your YouTube channel? How can people get a hold of you? Facebook, Instagram, all that. How can people follow you and, and get a hold of you? Yeah. So on, uh, on YouTube, just type in Miranda Detailing. You'll find our channel. Uh, even hashtag Satisfying Detailing Videos. It's kind of my new little <laughs> tagline. Okay, nice. <laughs> that I got on there. Yep. Uh, a lot of customers would say how satisfying it is to watch gotcha. people get detailed from beginning to end. That's cool. Uh, which, totally true. And, uh, yeah, so on Instagram, um, Miranda Mobile Auto Spa on Instagram. 
And on Facebook, there's a, there's a couple of different pages I have on there. But if you type in MirandaDetailing.com on Facebook um, or Satisfying Detailing Videos, I have a page on there as well. And, um, and our website, too, has a, a ton of links and video links to it. So just MirandaDetailing.com, uh, you'll be able to link to all of the social media with all the buttons that I have there uh, at the top of the website. And I appreciate your time. We're doing this on a Saturday afternoon for you. So I appreciate you taking the time out of your day when you could be spending it with the wife, your family, doing anything else. I appreciate you coming on the show. Yeah, man. It was a pleasure. I really, uh, really appreciate talking to you. And uh, thank you again for the opportunity.